daughter is just thrown out and I'm gonna until I was three months pregnant. <laughs> Pregnancy and having a kid and still being a professional athlete is a whole different world. And all of a sudden gaining 20 kilos and you're like, oh my God. In the back of a lot of people's heads, it was, okay, that's the end of her career. I knew that was just the start of my career. I didn't want that to be the end of my career. My name is Jessica O'Rourke Tarmusley. I've been in Turkey for about 10 years. Uh, I'm originally American. I started playing football when I was four years old in the States, very much in the 90s boom of when American football really took off for women. It was very much a women's game. Go! And I grew up inspired by these women that were on Pepsi commercials or Nike commercials and really proving that they can do it too. I think there was this famous commercial about Mia Hamm um, and she did a commercial with Michael Jordan and it was almost anything you can do I can do better and it just showed this rivalry between men and women and that women were just as good as men. Had enough? <laughs> Let's go. Anything you can be, I can be greater. First stop. I remember at a young age being told, you can't do this, you can't play this because you're a girl. And it wasn't football, it was just any other games. And I think that was something that really shaped who I am. I think it's really unfair to tell a woman, just because she's a woman, there's something that, that she can't do because she's a woman. And at this young age, before you have all these moldings about what society tells you and why women can be a certain way or why men should be a certain way, I just, I really didn't get it. The essence of me was like, why? We're all people. And um, I think throughout my whole journey in football, that was one of the reasons I was always motivated to play, just to prove you can and prove that women can play. One of the reasons I really am inspired to play here in Turkey because I, I recognized and when I first came here that Turkey is on this growth process of women's football developing and there's still a lot of girls that need those idols that didn't have access to those idols that I had growing up. And I hope in some ways with my teammates and with other girls here in Turkey that I can help them um, understand that yes, you can do this, that you deserve to play, that just because you're a woman um, doesn't mean that there's something you can't do or you have to fulfill these roles that society tells you you should. You should do what your heart says and what inside that you really want to. Pregnancy and having a kid and still being a professional athlete is a whole different ball game. Yeah, it was exciting, but it was also scary, and it, it kind of, as a woman, it makes you think, okay, now what happens to my career? What's the next step? Can I still play? And from my experience from living in the U.S., I, I knew there were lots of women that had played through their pregnancies up until a certain period. Um, but in Turkey, this is, the culture really regards uh, women and when they're pregnant as a really fragile and uh, delicate issue and you shouldn't carry anything or you shouldn't you know you should just sit down and rest and not do anything and to be playing soccer in a culture where they think you should sit down and really rest and take care of yourself was um, it was a little scary so to be honest for the first few months I didn't tell anybody my coach didn't know my teammates didn't know um, just my doctor knew I was obviously sure to get the consent from my doctor and to make sure everything was okay Merhabalar, ben Mutlu Can Zavotçu. Beşiktaş Kadın Futbol Takımları Teknik Direktörüyüm. Ya da o orada mı yapsak gollarla? Yani Jessica'nın hamilelik döneminde tabii ki ilk kez bir sporcumuzun hamileliğine şahit olduğumuz için tabii çok 
farklı duygular hissettiğimiz bir dönemdi. Ama e, benim eşim de aynı dönemde hamile olduğu için ve Jessica'dan 3 e, ay önce yaklaşık olarak onun anne olduğu dönemden 3 ay önce de ben baba olduğum için e, onu anlayışla karşılayabildiğimi ve e, bu duruma e, destek olabildiğimi düşünüyorum. Ama tabii ki ilk de daha sonrasında ikinci bebekte daha tecrübeliydik onu öğrendiğimiz zaman. İyi bir iletişimle e, bu süreci güzel bir şekilde geçirdiğimizi düşünüyorum. Sporcu için aslında hamilelik kariyer bitirici bir şey olmadığını gösteren bir örnekte Jessica. Bununla beraber birçok sporcu var, e, voleybolcular var, basketbolcular var ve kesinlikle hamilelik e, bir engel olduğunu düşünmüyorum. Sadece bir süre uzak kalmanızı sağlıyor ama hamilelik sürecini dediğim gibi ve sonrasındaki o rehabilitat dönemini iyi geçirirseniz de gayet e, profesyonel bir şekilde dönüş yapabiliyorsunuz Jessica'nın olduğu gibi. Tamam, okay. Peki, ben orada kadar da geliyorum ondan sonra şey yaparız. Tamam. Okay. I think they sort of suspected something was off at some point because I'm not a player that gets a red card or a yellow card or that argues with people um, and really causes a scene but there was one match where I freaked out on the referee and I was just like it was just all of these hormones raising up and he made a horrible call and I went up and I was like are you kidding me and I became this like monster and I just remember my coach and uh, the team manager looking at me like okay like something's not right you know and uh, after that I had gone in the locker room and had a fight with one of my teammates too and they were just so surprised because they never saw this side of me it was just like all these emotions surging up and then after that point I felt so bad about the way I reacted but it was just these hormones that I had no control of there was nothing I could do to control it and um, I went to my teammate and I went to my coach and I said look um, I don't know how to say this it's not easy to say and it's just you're a little scared too because it's never happened and I uh, said look um, I'm pregnant I'm gonna have a baby and I think they kind of guessed they kind of assumed that <laughs> something like that had been up and uh, yeah they were supportive and they were excited because it was actually the end of our season at that time too so they were excited for me but I think in the back of a lot of people's heads it was okay that's the end of her career and um, I knew that was just the start of my career I didn't want that to be the end of my career I think the passion that we see in the men's game. I mean, Turkey is so passionate about football. It's one of the most passionate countries I've seen. As far as it being translated to the women's game, I think there's just not a lot of exposure that women's football exists here. A lot of people are just not aware that there's a league that has, you know, there's a first league, there's a second league, there's a lot of girls that play, there's a women's national team that competes in, you know, the European qualifiers. And I think there's a huge potential for that passion that exists in the men's game to easily be translated to the women's game. It's just a lack of awareness, a lack of support for the women's game here and acknowledgement and maybe even so sometimes, you know, acceptance that women can play. So to be honest, like now at this point, there's not the same passion for women's football that we see in the men's game, but I really believe there's a huge potential for it. So the typical female player in Besiktas, right now um, I'm the only one that's married, I'm the only one that has children, but for my teammates a lot of them are working um, full time or they're students as well and I think you find that's the standard for women's football all across Turkey and in some other countries as well, uh, but you know they're working all day and then they're coming here for training at night and um, the status of women's football in Turkey right now is the same as it was in a lot of other countries, but you need to have another job to make ends meet. You can't survive just playing on football. Merhaba, ben Didem Karagenç. Beşiktaş kadın futbol takımında oynuyorum. Sol bek pozisyonundayım. Aynı zamanda milli takımda kaptanlık yapıyorum. Kadın A milli takımında Türkiye. Aynı zamanda beden eğitimi öğretmenliği yapıyorum. Beş seneden beri beden eğitimi öğretmen olarak görev alıyorum. Aynı zamanda Türkiye Futbol Federasyonu'nda analiz uzmanı olarak Ee, çalışıyorum. Oradaki e, genç çocukların, genç kızların e, daha iyi bir şekilde futbolu öğrenmeleri için e, uğraşıyorum ve çabalıyorum. Yani futboldan e, sadece geçimimi sağlayamıyorum. O yüzden ek bir iş yapmak durumundayım. Futbola çok küçük yaşlarda başladım aslında. E, ancak yeteri kadar takım olmadığı için takımda görev alamadım. Yaklaşık 11 yaşında lisanslı olarak e, bir futbol kulübü vurdum, buldum ve 11 yaşında 
resmi olarak, lisanslı olarak futbola başlamış oldum. Bu problem oluyor genelde Türkiye'de çünkü çok fazla takım olmadığından dolayı çok sayıda kulüp bulamıyorsunuz. Türkiye'de kadın futbolu ancak gitgide gelişiyor. Avrupa düzeyinde, Avrupa seviyesine ulaşmaya ve yaklaşmaya başladık diyebilirim. Çünkü A milli takımla şu anda Avrupa Şampiyonası grup eleme müsabakaları oynuyoruz ve maçlarımız çok iyi gidiyor. Grup maçları oynuyoruz. İnşallah bu sene Avrupa Şampiyonası'nda iyi yerlere gelip ülkemizi daha iyi yerlerde temsil etmek istiyoruz. Türkiye'de kadın futbolunun gelişmesi için Beşiktaş gibi büyük camia kulüplerinin daha çok takım kurması gerekir. Yani Fenerbahçe'nin, Galatasaray'ın, Trabzonspor'un bunların takımlarının olması lazım ki rekabet ortamı olsun. Ben Beşiktaş'ta oynuyorum ancak der bir maçı diyebileceğim bir maç Konak Belediyespor veya Ateşehir Belediyespor hep belediyelerin takımları. Ancak bir Galatasaray'la karşılaşma imkanı bulsak eminim ki o camianın da taraftarları daha fazla destek verir ve daha büyük statlarda oynayabilsek belki de Vodafone Arena'da biz de maç yapabilsek bize de çok fazla seyirci gelir ve bizim de bilinirliğimiz daha fazla artar diye düşünüyorum. Esra Erol, 32 yaşındayım. 21 senedir futbol oynuyorum. 13 yaşında başladım. A milli takım, milli takım kaptanlığını yaptım. İkinci sezonun Beşiktaş takımında. Şampiyonlar Ligi 23 maç oynadım. Konak Belediyesi'nde 5 şampiyonluk yaşadım. Beşiktaş takımında bir şampiyonluk yaşadım. İşim Avcılar Belediyesi'nde eğitmenlik yapıyorum. 3 senedir antrenörlük yapıyorum. Herkes e, futbol oynadığında e, tabii ki şaşırıyor. Kadın futbol mu oynar diye. E, genellikle e, dışarıda işte halı saha maçı yapalım mı? İşte e, hani biraz böyle şey yapıyor. Ama şu an kadın futbolu birkaç senedir gelişmeye başladı. Ve herkes gerçekten şu an hayranla izliyor. Sen altı Sevgi Çınar, 25 yaşındayım, e, futbolcuyum, beden eğitimi öğretmeniyim aynı zamanda. E, küçük yaşlarda futbola başladım, babam sayesinde başladım. Futbol e, dünyaca erkek oyunu olarak bilinebilir ama bence sadece erkek oyunu değil, aynı zamanda kadın oyunu da. Çünkü biz e, kadının gücünü gösterdik bu sene. Türkiye'de kadın futboluna ilgi artması için öncelikle maçlarımızın televizyonlarda, televizyon kanallarında yayınlanması gerekiyor. Biz de erkekler gibi 90 dakika oynuyoruz. Sağ ölçülerimiz aynı. Birebir mücadelelerde biz kadınız diye birbirimizden çekinmiyoruz. Erkekler gibi biz de mücadele ediyoruz. Futbol takımlarının açması gerekiyor kadın futbol branşını. Mesela Beşiktaş'ın olduğu gibi işte Fenerbahçe, Galatasaray, Trabzonspor, Diğer takımlar da eğer bize katkı sağlarsa, kadın futboluna destek olursa daha da gelişeceğimizi düşünüyorum. İyi akşamlar. Necmettin Çelikan, Beşiktaş Futbol Akademi Direktörüyüm. Aynı zamanda kadın futbolu yöneticisi olarak görev yapmaktayım. Kadın futbolu bütün dünyada her geçen gün gittikçe artıyor. Rekabetin olduğu yerde başarı olacaktır. Bu ligde, Kadın Futbol Ligi'nde rekabetin artması bizleri de daha ileriye doğru sürükleyeceğini düşünüyorum. Daha fazla gelişmesi için kulüplerin bütçelerini birazcık buraya kaydırması gerekiyor. Aynı zamanda sadece bütçe değil birazcık da düşünce yapısını. Spor kulüpleri çok erkek egemen yapılardalar. Yönetim kurullarında kadınların olmadığı bir Spor kulüpleri yapısı var Türkiye'de. Kadınları sporun içerisine, yöneticilerin içerisine daha fazla çekersek, yönetim kurullarına daha fazla alırsak, kadınların sesleri daha fazla çıkacağını düşünüyorum. Jessica hem iyi bir futbolcu hem de iyi bir anne. Çocuklarıyla geliyor antrenmanlara. Hamileliği dönemde de maç oynadı. Birkaç tane lig maçına çıktı. Tabi bundan hocamızın haberi yoktu. Daha sonradan hocamız öğrendi. Jessica çok güzel bir insan. Anne olarak da çok güzel bir insan gerçekten. Biz burada görüyoruz, yaşıyoruz. Çocuklarını antrenmanlara getiriyor, çekimlere getiriyor. Takım organizasyonlarına getiriyor. Ve her zaman çocuklarının üzerinde Beşiktaş formaları. Yani küçük çocuğu da olsa, çok küçük de olsa, bebek de olsa onun üzerinde biz Beşiktaş formasını görüyoruz. En büyük. Beşiktaş. Beşiktaş. Yeah. <gülüyor> Bize çok büyük bir örnek diyebilirim. Çünkü kadınların futbol oynaması zaten başarılı 
olamaz diye beklenirken o üstüne iki tane güzel e, yiyen e, verdi bizlere ve e, onlarla beraber hala oynamaya devam ediyor. Bu bize ilham veriyor. Yani kadınların yapamayacak yapamayacağı hiçbir şey olmadığını gösteriyor. Gerçekten inanılmaz bir kadın. E, bu demek oluyor ki yani hem kadınlar futbol da oynayabilir, hem evlenebilirler, hem çocuk da yapabilirler. E, bunların hiçbirisi e, kadınların e, yapamayacağı şeyler değil. This is mom life. My daughter's just thrown up and I'm gonna <laughs> just, uh, yeah. When you try to get a pretty, pretty picture, sometimes kids have other plans for you. Sometimes it's unexpected, but uh, yeah, this is Mia. She's uh, three months old uh, or just about four months now, actually. And uh, she's been one of the greatest things to ever happen in my life. Uh, One of the other greatest things probably going to come here in a little bit and uh, make another unexpected <laughs> scene soon. Each pregnancy was different with this little guy here. Come here, Leo. Come here. Um, with this guy here, the pregnancy was super easy. Um, I was able to play until I was three months pregnant. And he's just only 15 months or 16 months older than her. So they're quite close in age. So it was two kids back to back. And uh, during his pregnancy, it was really easy for me to stay active in sports. And um, I played until three months. I played our last game of the season. I was still skateboarding, kite surfing, water surfing, um, wave surfing in Hawaii. And uh, it was really easy the whole nine month period with him. Uh, the birth, the first birth, first having a child was really, I'm not gonna lie, painful and I have so much respect for women because, and our moms and everybody because you really don't know that experience until you live it. And um, yeah, with Mia it was, uh, it was the reverse. The, uh, the pregnancy was a lot more difficult. The first trimester I had horrible morning sickness. I couldn't get out of bed. I was just throwing up all the time, but the birth was really easy, really calm. Um, so yeah, and then uh, recovery after my son took a little bit longer than it did with her. I was actually up and on my feet in, uh, in just a few hours after giving birth to her. We were with my son for two weeks. I really couldn't do anything. So I think every woman has a different experience. Every athlete, every person has a different experience on healing and recovery. And um, But I think any mother, whether they're athlete or not, will tell you at the end of the day. Um, yeah, they're so worth it. Where are you going? Up your jaw. Up your down. He wants to see Sam. <laughs> He's all her downstairs. So. Being a woman, actually, you have breast milk that you need to express every four hours. Um, and if you don't, you can get ill. So you have this window of time where to train, to work out, to do some things for yourself, to get in traffic to wherever you have to go. So yeah, I would be leaving practice at, uh, the girls would be cooling down and I'd be like, coach, I gotta go. And thankfully he was really understanding about it as he had uh, twins and he knew from his wife that, okay, you know what, she does have to go home. She has uh, kids that she needs to take care of, but more still physical uh, needs that I have to take care of because we train at seven, there's the traffic and uh, that three hour window was closing down quite quickly, so. Do we want to go? Do you want to go to your dad? Uh, I'm Osan, um, Jessica's husband of two years. <laughs> If we have to break down Jessica into categories, the athlete Jess and the professional athlete and the sportswoman, I think he loves that facet and uh, is really proud of that facet. Uh, but the mother, the pregnant mother, um, parts of... Uh, Of that, I think, really terrified him. I think he was scared, really fearful that something might happen to the kids, would they be okay? Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, I think that was a little bit hard for him. It was. Uh, it was playoff games. They were still in contention for a championship, and and uh, and she was playing full 90 minutes still at uh, three months pregnancy, and and I remember this instance like. 
And by the way, we got clearance from our doctor that is entirely okay for her to play until three months old, but th three months of pregnancy. But regardless, your heart skips a beat when you kind of watch your wife intentionally uh, positioning herself so that the opposition uh, player would foul her and she would literally flop belly on. Your heart does skip a beat, <laughs> I'll, ha I'll have to admit. But, um, but those are um, a few months in this journey. She put it all out there for her team. And now we have two beautiful children and uh, it's, uh, it's another, um, I'm not gonna say a struggle, but, uh, but a fun transition period where she's trying to get game fit. And, and from this point on, she's back. As far as trying to get back to fitness after being pregnant, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself first and foremost. Um, because you go from being this fit person, this athlete your whole life, and all of a sudden gaining 20 kilos and you're like, oh my God. And to be quite honest, it was at times hard to love that figure when it's a figure you're not used to. And um, I did a lot of work and I talked to some people and they said, hey, this is part of womanhood. This is what's amazing about being a woman is that your body can do this and you need to love that shape of you. Um, but to be quite honest, I had a hard time with that. And, um, and I did, after both pregnancies, want to get back into shape uh, quite quickly for myself. Um, but then I found myself both times after too, kind of missing that belly and that feeling in your belly of um, creating that miracle of life. And, um, but yeah, as far as getting back and feeling the pressure, I don't think it was pressure from other people. Yes, thank you. Oh, but his head fell off again. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Here, put his head on. You don't want me to fix it? So um, the pressure was more so for myself and not from society or other people's concerns about how I look. I very much decided to play again and decided to um, get in shape as quick as I did for myself so I could feel good, so I could feel like I was back and um, be better for my kids. This was a new pregame. I think for my son, that's one of the things I love, that he's going to grow up knowing that this is normal for women, where it should be. I mean, there, there's no reason women can't play football or do any sport or do anything that they feel like they can do. So I'm really excited that my son's going to grow up knowing that women can do whatever they want, whether it's football, whether it's this or that, and it's just normal to him. It's not something he had to learn. It's something he just experienced firsthand. So when my son hears Besiktas, he says, Besiktas, mommy, Besiktas, kick. Mommy goal, mommy goal. So these are, you know, he's just starting to talk, he's two, but you know, he's not, he doesn't have these uh, constructions that society or the culture tells him that football is not for girls, that for him it's just very natural as any child or any human being perceives anything. This is just what it is. Beşiktaş Jimnastik Kulübü'nün bir kadın futbol takımı var. Bu konuda da her zaman olduğu gibi ilk oyuncu olan biziz. Hayırlı olsun bütün hanımefendilerin kadınlar günü kutluyorum. Her bir rekor olacak bizim için aynı zamanda bir ilk olacak. Umuyorum bundan sonrası aslında bizim için. Ve ilk dönüp geliyor, mücadele başlıyor. O da Popak'ta. Roma karşı hem de e, Montero'ya karşı Jessica müthiş kapı. Olga Garcia, Olga Garcia. Olga Garcia. Ve Olga Garcia. Yani i̇stemeden gol attı orada da gitseydi daha büyük. It was truly amazing. It was a really, really 
great honor to be here and be a part of this experience. Uh, the fans were amazing, and yeah, we're really thankful for them for having us. Hakikaten muazzam bir görüntü bu. Çocuklarla beraber. İkisi beraberce kupayı kaldıracaklar. Bak 2'ye çıksa da 2'ye 0 yenilse de Beşiktaş. 